Okay, thank you very much for uh, the opportunity to speak. Um, so I'm going to start by giving some notations. So f is going to be a, a cusp uh, eigenform. Wait, k. Uh, for gamma not n. Uh, P is going to be a prime in odd prime. And um, um, so I'm going to uh, so denote uh, Kf, the field of Fourier coefficient of f. And uh, so I, I see it inside Q bar. And uh, and I fix matings of Q bar into Q P bar, uh, and uh, that I, I choose an isomorphism with um, with C, and uh, so I can see element in Q bar in Q P bar or in C in this way. Um, so I <coughs> um, I'm going to. To fix k, a periodic field containing kf, um, and uh, so O is going to be the ring of integers, and uh, I'm going to call OFP uh, the intersection. Yeah, um, like that. Um, so I'm going to denote by rho f uh, the Galois obsession attached to f by the ring. Uh, so I'm going to call Vf. Uh, the space of the representation, so Vf is morphic to k squared. And uh, <coughs> so I'm going to. Over C or is it over QP bar? Here? Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. F is of way <laughs> equal to 2. Okay, so there is no conflict. Okay. So, OK. Yeah. Um, and so LF is going to be inside, um, uh, VF is going to be a stable lattice. Um, and uh, I'm going to call rho F bar the residual representation. And uh, so uh, we are going to assume that um, the image of, of rho F bar is, is sufficiently large. And, and for simplicity, uh, uh, I'm just going to assume that it contains SL to FP. Okay. And maybe there are weaker hypotheses, but uh, just uh, to make life simpler, I will just assume this. <coughs> and uh, I will make another assumption. So this is one assu assumption. Another assumption is that um, uh, what F, so F is, we call N primitive. And basically, that means that uh, the, the ramification of OF bar is the same as the ramification of OF. Um, and uh, I make another assumption is that uh, K is, uh, is less than P. So this is a, a fontaine lafay type condition here. OK? So, um, so under this condition, there is a theorem. Um, which is essentially due to uh, uh, Wiles, Taylor Wiles, and Ida. Um, which say that um, the adjoint L function of OF at one, um, yes. So you get the gamma, gamma function at one times the adjoint L function of f of rho f at one divided by omega f plus omega f minus. I'm going to explain those uh, periods here. Um, uh, is, is basically uh, equal to the, the size of uh, the block cato group of the residual representation. And uh, so, um, 
So this is a, a special case uh, of, a, of a, a, a general conjecture of Locato. And uh, <coughs> so the, the way that this is proved is by there are two, uh, two, two, um, there are, there are two ingredients. I mean, two important ingredients. So, <coughs> so one is to uh, um, relate H one F of Q to R two F. To uh, something, uh, an automorphic class group, which is uh, what Ida called the congruence, congruence um, module, and and this this uh, step is is done by the, the work of of Wiles and Taylor Wiles. <coughs> And uh, and and then there is an argument which is uh, done by Hida, which pr proved that this uh, automorphic uh, class group, um, I mean the cardinality of this automorphic class group is equal to this adjoint L value. So, <coughs> so we can uh, try to generalize uh, this kind of formula for, now if you take um, alpha, uh, a Jewish like character, uh, the question that was raised by Ida is, uh, uh, so do we have a similar formula? For um, the joint of four f twisted by this character at one, and uh, so the question that he raised was not a formula that relates uh, this adjoint L value to a similar group, but to an automorphic class group. So this is equal to some um, automorphic. Is the, the cardinality of some automorphic class group. So <coughs> I'm going to uh, to explain how we can answer this question uh, for certain character alpha, and especially for uh, quadratic character. Um, so um, give some more notations. Um, yes. Okay. So I'm going to use this one now. Um, so now f. <coughs> over Q is going to be an abelian extension. And uh, so we are going to consider two cases. So F is uh, totally real. And or F is imaginary quadratic. And uh, so, um, so, uh, so x is going to be uh, the modular curve uh, x not of n, um, and I'm going to call x f. Um, so the locally symmetric space. For GL two. Um, for GL2 over F uh, of, of level, uh, so my gamma not of, of N, but of course for, for, the, for the field F here. So let um, N is equal to K 
um, k minus 2. And I'm going to call L n uh, of A is going to, to, to be the symmetric, uh, sorry, the, the tensor product over all the embeddings of f into q bar uh, of sim n of a squared. And, and so we have an action of, of gamma naught for f on, on this space, and we can consider the cohomology um, of, of xf on the, the local symmetrics, uh, on the, the, the local system attached to it. Okay, so we can also consider a space SK F for gamma not N. It's going to be a, a space so of um, of cus form um, for GL two F of level. Gamma not n for f and a parallel weight um, k. So if f is totally real, so this is a space of Hilbert uh, modular forms, and uh, if if f is imaginary quadratic, this is the so-called space of Bianchi modular forms. Yeah, he, he, yes, he did. So we can, we, we can define space, uh, we can define echo operators acting on those spaces. Um, so at HF and so the echo algebra are acting on those spaces. Um, and uh, um, so, so, so here we have only echo operators uh, away of away from n. Uh, so it is just a spherical echo algebra tensor product of a spherical echo algebra at places not dividing n. Um, and uh, so we have uh, a base change a map that goes from. Uh, the echo algebra uh, for f to the echo algebra for q. <coughs> uh, so this is just uh, uh, come from the uh, Arthur Clausel uh, existence of the base change for GL two. Um, and uh, so, so here we have a map I'm going to call lambda that goes to uh, k f, uh, which is um, come from. Um, comes from, from, from the original modular form f. And uh, so we, uh, we consider m uh, the maximum. So yeah, I'm going to call this map lambda f. And I'm going to call m uh, the, the maximal ideal corresponding to To, to lambda uh, mod p, or lambda f mod p, or mf. And uh, consider t, uh, tf, the localization of this echo algebra here over f at this mf, and t is the corresponding localization um, um, at m. And then we have a map here to to O. 
So I'm just going to call this again lambda. Uh, this is going to be lambda f. Okay. So now we can define the uh, the congruence uh, modules. Uh, <coughs> so this is something that we call C1 lambda um, f um, yeah, just C1 lambda f so <coughs> so this is you take you take the um, Yeah, so here I, I consider that this is like a uh, algebra over OFP. Um, well, necessarily I have to extend the, the scalar here. So here this is omega TF over O, tensor O with lambda F. And uh, you can define similarly C1 lambda, sorry, C1 uh, lambda as C omega T over O, tensor O. Lambda. So there is another way to, so this is the same as pf modulo pf squared, and this is p modulo p squared, where p is a kernel of lambda, and pf is a kernel of lambda. Okay. So, so this, this map uh, lambda f correspond to uh, the action of the operator for f on the base change of f to gl to f. So, um, and this here. So if you call f hat the base change of f to gl to f, um, so lambda f uh, correspond to to the action of of the equal algebra on f hat, okay, and uh, so because uh, because this is a base change, so you have an action, so there is an action of of the Galois group of f over q on this module, uh, C1 lambda f. So if you, <coughs> so if you take uh, alpha, a character of this, of this, of this Galois group, then you can consider C1, um, C1 alpha of lambda f, which is the alpha part of this, go of, of, of this module. <coughs> so, so what is that conjecture? So the conjecture right here. Um, yes. Is the following. So if assume that alpha is quadratic, then um, set by alpha at one times L. F at one. So divided by omega f plus omega f minus um, is the same. Yes, thank you. At one. Um, of C one alpha of lambda f. So this is when. 
when alpha is quadratic real, and if alpha is, uh, so this is alpha real, quadratic, and if alpha is imaginary quadratic, um, so he has a similar conjecture where this, this product is replaced by something else that I'm going to define. But it turns out that actually the conjecture in that case is false. And uh, it's false? Yes. Uh, because this is not the correct number here. You have to replace by another congruent number. Of course, you can make this conjecture for, for any, uh, not necessarily for uh, imaginary, not necessarily for quadratic characters. But, uh, so now I'm going to de define the periods. So you have, <coughs> um, so, so I'm going to define epsilon. Uh, epsilon is going to be a, a, a collection of signs uh, index on the embeddings of f into q bar. So, so minus one. I f. And so, if you call, consider j uh, um, the subset uh, of i f such that uh, epsilon sigma equals plus one, uh, you can define a um, a map uh, omega j, um, sorry, omega epsilon of f. So f here is going to be um, um, in SKF, gamma not n, <coughs> inside HD. So here I'm going to assume the case f is, is real, um, of x f. Totally real. Yes, totally real. <coughs> of L and C. And actually, uh, uh, so you, you have an action here on, of this group here. On, on, this, on this cohomology, for each for each uh, real place, uh, you have a, a, a complex conjugation that acts here, and uh, so you can de you can decompose uh, the Betti cohomology Now we take coefficient in in OFP, and you can take the epsilon part. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so here. Actually, this guy belongs to the epsilon part here. Uh, and this epsilon part is, going is, is, is actually rank 1 over O. And so we, we can define, uh, uh, so delta epsilon um, f, a basis over OFP. And so we can define the period omega f epsilon uh, f cross. Uh, so by the formula um, omega epsilon of f um, is equal to omega f epsilon times delta epsilon f. So when f is equal to q, so when f is equal to q, then uh, we have just uh, two signs, plus one or minus one, and it's how we can define omega f plus and omega f minus. Okay. 
Excuse me? I would say the ethical Q. Yes. And we get plus Q and we get minus Q. Oh, no. No, 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 no. So in that case, epsilon is just uh, an element in plus or minus one. Oh, no, no, this is this, this F, yes. This is a modular form F. So the, this F is over Q, the ball face F is over F. <laughs> okay. Um, and then there is the case of F, bold F equals F at, which is a base change. Okay. So the conjecture uh, is the following. So, and uh, so I'm just stating the conjecture uh, with the hypothesis that I have uh, um, uh, stated in the beginning. Uh, so in particular, in general, those periods uh, should depend of the choice of a lattice uh, inside the, the Betty uh, cohomology or the Betty realization of the motif. Uh, but here we assume that rho f bar is absolutely irreducible, so therefore there is no no choice of lattices. So in that case, uh, <coughs> we can state the, fo the following conjecture. So, so if f is totally real, uh, then so omega uh, f hat epsilon uh, should be uh, equal up to an amount in uh, O cross to omega f plus to the power d plus epsilon omega f minus d minus epsilon. So where d plus the mod f p cross. So where uh, d plus epsilon is a uh, canonity of, of sigma such that epsilon sigma is plus one and d minus All right. Um, and so basically, this conjecture uh, is just a special case of uh, of uh, um, general conjecture of period relations on, of motifs, uh, of base change of motifs. Um, so, um, so here is the theorem that we can prove. Um, so assume that uh, the Galois group of f over q is isomorphic to z mod 2 some power, um, um, well, let me write, uh, M. Uh, uh, then uh, the conjecture, conjecture holds for epsilon uh, such that uh, d plus epsilon equals d minus epsilon. <coughs> okay. Um, all right. So, um, so the, the the proof of this conjecture, the, the main argument is when when m is equal to one. So we just have a quadratic extension, and then there is an induction argument. Over, over the dimension. But the essential <coughs> case is when, when, when the, the extension is quadratic. Um, so um, a corollary of this, and actually this is a corollary, but this is also proved at the same time uh, as the case where M, M is um, where well, this extension is quadratic, so it's the following theorem. So assume uh, f real quadratic 
um, then um, it does conjecture holds for um, alpha the corresponding quadratic the corresponding quadratic character in fact we we can even uh, it, it follows from from i equals t theorem in that case that in fact we have the formula that gamma of add f plus omega minus f uh, is uh, the size of the block at the group for add or f twisted by alpha. What time did I start? So let, let me explain now what kind of result we can get when f is imaginary quadratic. So now I'm going to assume f imaginary quadratic. <coughs> so when f is totally real... Uh, are, are you going to explain the proof of all of this? Or? Uh, of this theorem? Yes, yes, I'm going to explain this. Um, so when it is imaginary quadratic, um, then in that case we, um, so in the, in the total real case, the, 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 the cuspidal cohomology is essentially concentrated in mid middle degree, which is the, uh, the HD. Um, but in the imaginary quadratic case, then the cuspidal cohomology is, is essentially uh, supported on two degrees, which, is which are one and two. So in that case, XF, is an hyperbolic space uh, of dimension three for R, and uh, so we have two Eichler Shimura maps um, so, so omega I. Um, for i equals 1 and 2. And uh, so if we look at um, Ln o, uh, Fp, I mean look at the lambda part here, this is going to be, so for i equals 1 and 2, this is rank 1 over OFP. And uh, so we can define two periods, omega 1, F, uh, omega 2, F, exactly using the same kind of formula. Uh, let me call so this OFP, delta I, F. Uh, yes, modulo torsion. Thank you. Uh, so exactly the same formula uh, that uh, omega f, uh, f, uh, f, uh, f, uh, f. Uh, well maybe I Okay. <coughs> 
<coughs> so in, in that case, uh, so the theorem that we get um, is the following. So, um, so, so is the same as hypothesis before. Yeah. So if there is an hypothesis I forgot to mention is that P has to, to be prime to the discriminant of the of the field. So. <coughs> so the theorem is that uh, omega one of f hat uh, is equal to omega plus f omega plus f um, modulo f p. So <coughs> so now um, so. Contrary to the case where uh, f is is uh, is total real, uh, the L function, and now this add f, add rho f, this is by alpha at one, is not a critical value, and um, and uh, so. Uh, in that case, the, the period is um, I is not going to be this critical period here for for this adjoint L function. So, in fact, um, so the, the, the second uh, something that um, I mean, let's say this first part. Uh, the second part is that um, So omega two of f hat is now. Um, uh, so this is equal to um, something that I'm going to call eta f f sharp, <coughs> which is a a congruence. Num uh, I mean, this is uh, the cardinality of a congruence module. Not the one that I have defined before, um, measuring um, the congruences uh, between the congruences between f hat and Bianchi modular form. G, uh, which are not a base change. Uh, from from Q. <coughs> so in general, um, so in general, um, uh, this number. Um, is um, so divides uh, uh, the cardinality of 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 C one um, of C one alpha of uh, of lambda lambda f, but there is no equality. Equality. Um, if um, if TF is not complete intersection, <coughs> okay. and uh, so uh, so in that case, actually, there is a work of of Caligari Garati, which uh, assert that. Uh, so this TF is, is never a complete intersection except if we have only characteristic P-forms. 
Um, so in, th in fact, that means that we, ha we, we have never this equality here when we take a base change. What happened to the uh, tolerances with other forms of over Q? What, what so they are, they are controlled by the same number, which is the one that I defined in, in, uh, at the beginning, which is uh, the adjoint L value at 1 divided by omega f plus omega f minus. So this is because of the alpha, the twist by alpha, they don't appear. Yeah, they don't appear. Twenty minutes. Okay. So uh, I'm going to explain a bit of formalism between uh, of, of congruence modules. Um, so um, so in general, if you have uh, you take R um, uh, um, <coughs> a finite. O algebra, and so we assume that it is reduced. So, <coughs> and uh, so you, um, if you tensor um, with uh, the field of fraction R k, so this is just R tensor k. So this is going to be semi-simple. So you you can find something bad in, in times the product of two uh, semi-simple. Um, K algebra, and um, so you can write A the image of R into AK. Um, I mean, sorry, just that case. I'm just fixing on isomorphism. <coughs> uh, so you you can have uh, an embedding of R in cross A cross B like this. Okay, and uh, so. Uh, so it's the image in AK, so there is no torsion. Yes, there is no torsion. So in that case, so A cross B divided by R, uh, you can see that this is uh, isomorphic to uh, A uh, divided by R intersection uh, A cross 0. And this is the same as B divided by R intersection uh, 0 cross B. Okay, well, assume R is flat or yes. R, R is, is finite O algebra reduced and uh, okay. yes, no torsion. Yes. Thank you. Um, torsion three. So <coughs> uh, you see that uh, this is an isomorphism if and only if this module is, is trivial, uh, and when it's not, you see that that means that you have uh, congruences between uh, characters that occur uh, on the AK factor and, uh, and characters that occur on the B factor. Okay. So this is uh, <coughs> a congruence module between A and B. Depending on A. Yes, depending on A, yes. So if you have, now if, if M is R module, um, you, you, you have a similar decomposition according to A on B, and you, you can de denote by A, uh, so let's call, um, um, if I call lambda A the map from R to A, and lambda B is a similar map, so you can define M lambda <coughs> A is, is going to be um, uh, the image of M by the map MK to um, M tensor um, R to AK. And you can def denote by M lambda A as the intersection of this guy with M.
So, <coughs> and I'm just going to, to, to write this M. Uh, so if there is no confusion, I just write M A and M uh, subscript or s subscript A, like this. And uh, so in that case, you can, you can, you can see that uh, the equivalent of this isomorphism here is, is the isomorphism M A over M A. So we have the isomorphism to M B. Yes, yes. So, yes, those, those modules now are, are finite ones. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, for. Um, so, now if we, we put ourselves in the, the, in the case where. Uh, now we take r equals uh, tf. <coughs> so we know that we have a map from tf to t and to O by lambda here. So uh, in particular, you, you, you can define um, an isomorphism is tk cross something that I'm going to call t sharp. And that correspond to forms which are not base change. All the forms here are forms which come from base change, and are so those are so uh, do not come in uh, from base change. And uh, sorry, it okay, like this. And uh, T sharp is just going to be the image of T F into T sharp K, and so on. So you <coughs> you you can define. So I'm going to go denote by C naught. Uh, so this module is going to be going to denote this module by uh, C naught A of M. And of course, this is the same as C naught B of M. Okay. So you can define, uh, for instance, C naught uh, lambda or same as C naught lambda A, for short, um, of, of TF. So this is just, uh, now the canonity of this is just some things that I'm going to do lambda F hat. This is a congruence number. For, for F hat. And uh, <coughs> we can also consider the same for just t. So c naught. So this is lambda f here. Lambda of t is just lambda f. And this is just the congruent number for f. Okay. So so the original theorem of Ida. Uh, He proved that actually the cardinality of C naught lambda, and for the module, it takes um, uh, the cohomology of uh, of x with coefficient l l o. And so he showed that this is the same as this L, this this L adjoint L value. And uh, so, from the result of Taylor Wiles, this this module is uh, sorry, I forgot to localize that M. So, from the work of Taylor Wiles, this module is three of Frank. Uh, well, let me take take a plus. This module is three of Frank one over the Ecker algebra. So, this is the the, the usual uh, this, this eta f is a congruence number, and uh, because uh, because uh, it's it result from the work of why it's until why is that the equal algebra in that case is complete intersection. Then this is equal to the, the same thing to the carnality of now the, the C1 of lambda. And, uh, 
and this can be essentially this C1 of lambda is essentially the dual, the Pontiagin dual of the Selmer group. So it's how the, the Bocato conjecture is proved. So <coughs> you can uh, you can do something similar for a totally real field, and uh, under some assumption you can prove also R equals zero theorem and that R is anti R complete intersection, and and uh, and you can also generalize. Uh, the work of Hidas, it was done by Dimitrov, to show a formula of this type. And, uh, but in that case, um, so, uh, in the case of T to total real, um, the formula is going to be C naught for the F of HD. And then you have to take the epsilon part um, um, is gamma hat f hat one l hat f hat one, and here you divide by omega f hat epsilon omega f hat minus epsilon, <coughs> and uh, so you expect. So if you have this period relation you see that now you can decompose this product as a product of those uh, 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 integral value twisted by all the characters of the, of the totally real fields. And uh, after you have to separate everything. And uh, so you have to, <coughs> so in the case, in the real quadratic case, uh, one can define actually um, a congruence number that measures a, uh, congruences between base change and non-base change. So you can define, uh, so if you have this module M, this, this TF module, so you can define, <coughs> uh, look at M, lambda, and then you quotient by, so m t, and then you take lambda. So m t is going to be, so this is lambda f, sorry. So this m t now is, is a t module. <coughs> so therefore you can consider its up lambda part. And this, uh, so let's call this l l eta lambda sharp of m. So measure the congruences between um, forms which are non-base change. and f hat for the given module m. <coughs> and uh, so using this formalism, you, you can show that, um, so if you look at eta uh, lambda for the module m, then this divides eta, sorry, lambda f, uh, lambda for, for the, you um, mt times, um, yeah, sorry, I should put the lambda f here, lambda f sharp for the module m. Okay. So now this, so when m is equal to um, hd epsilon, by this formula, um, so I'm, I'm going to assume now that uh, f is quadratic. Um, you you can show therefore that um, uh, L of adjoint of f twan f of adjoint of f uh, twisted by alpha at one 
divided by omega f epsilon hat omega f hat minus epsilon. So divides. Um, so this is, is just the adjoint of 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 f um, divided by omega f plus omega f minus. And so here you have this number. You have this, this divisibility that comes from this formula of Dimitrov uh, and, and this formula which is uh, very uh, formal from, this, from those definitions. And uh, so, um, so there is another ingredient So there is one, one, one more, in another ingredient. Which is the following. So if you take G, um, so in Hilbert modular form, for, for F quadratic, And so you look at uh, omega of g, omega, no, omega epsilon for, of g. So this is, in that case, this is a two-form. <coughs> and so you have the modular curve that you can embed in the Hilbert modular surface. So this gives you a two-cycle inside xf. And you can integrate uh, this form over this uh, <coughs> surface here and so in that case you can you get the two in you get the following so you get zero if G is not a base change and otherwise you get the adjoint value of F twisted by alpha at one if G is f hat. So, so using this, uh, you can show that. Um, um, so you see that if you have a congruence between a form G, which is not a base chain, and f hat modulo p, uh, that tells you that this value is zero modulo p. Okay. So, so therefore, that tells you that this eta is of lambda of, of, of H2. Oh, okay, so here epsilon has to be equal, has to be plus minus or minus plus. <coughs> um, H2 um, epsilon. Um, so divides uh, the joint value of F um, twisted by alpha at one divided by omega f hat epsilon. So, so using, uh, using this divisibility on this one, uh, plus some um, uh, arguments using cornu uh, uh, work, uh, you can deduce that uh, omega um, f hat uh, epsilon, when epsilon is in one of those cases, is, is the same as omega f plus omega f minus. And uh, so uh, that gives you the period relation uh, exactly uh, in the case, in the quadratic case. Um, and by some induction argument, you can do the general case when f is, is just uh, of type 222. Um, and what kind of equivalence is it in the last formula? Here, this is modulo OFP cross. And uh, so you can, you, you, you have a similar form, you exact, uh, exactly with the same argument, you can show in the case, in the imaginary quadratic case, that the omega 2, sorry, the omega 1 F at is, 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 is equivalent to omega F plus omega F minus. 
So I wanted to speak about the Bailinson conjecture in the case of adjoint of f twisted by alpha, but uh, I don't think I have time, so to stop here. So in the imaginary quadratic case, do you need the relative phase formula, or do you? No, no. This is a sa you have the same the same statement. Yeah. Same statement. yeah. yeah. I mean, it's no, it's not using the relative trace formula that you show this. Uh, basically, what you do is that you you integrate uh, over um, over x a g times some Eisenstein series, mm -hmm. and in that case, this is related to the SIL function. And uh, so when there is a base change, the SIL function has a pole, and, uh, and, and the Eisenstein series also has, al has also a pole. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you take the residue, you get exactly this formula. Because the SIL function is going to be, in the case of a base change, it's going to be this adjoint L function times the theta function. So the, the pole is. <coughs> so the residue gives you this uh, when this is a base change, and the residue is zero when it's not. Forgotten the meaning of the gamma factor. So the gamma factor uh, is so each time that uh, so you, you have a motif and you look at the odd uh, number, you can define gamma factors. So in that case, uh, the, the gamma factor of add f twisted by alpha uh, s uh, is uh, so gamma s plus uh, k minus one uh, times gamma r of s. And then you you plus one in the uh, if if alpha is is real and uh, plus zero if alpha it's is what it's a product of ordinary gamma yes yes and the gamma c is just it's two pi minus s gamma s and gamma r. pi minus s over two gamma s over two. So basically, you have some power of pi. Yeah. And uh, so uh, if you look at, um, so in the case of alpha imaginary quadratic, uh, you, you, you can, so in that case, add, uh, if you look at the, the motif, uh, FMF is a motif attached to F when you look at this adjoint and moti adjoint motif twisted by alpha. Then in that case, you have, you have the motivic cohomology, which is rank one. And so you can define a regulator, uh, let's say, RF alpha. And then in that case, the Bellinson conjecture or Blockato conjecture tells you that uh, the adjoint L value, um, F twisted by alpha at one, times the gamma factor, alpha at one, divided by omega f plus omega f minus times this regulator uh, f alpha is, uh, is, is the size of, of some blockato Selmer group for adjoint. And uh, so here, uh, what? Yes, this is a special case of Bailinson here. And basically, you, you expect that this is the same as omega 2, f hat. F hat. And uh, so basically, that tells you that in that case, Bailinson conjecture of Prasanov and Katish conjecture are, are equivalent. But uh, this is more uh, of, this is an integral. I mean, Bailinson and, and, and Venkatesh, Prasanna are, are saying uh, a rational result. This is an integrality result. Uh, with, I mean, this is not a result. I mean, this is an integrality conjecture in Blockato. Uh, it turns out that this, this period is not equal to this period up to an integer, uh, up to a unit. Again, because, because in that case, uh, Ida's conjecture is not true. But if you use uh, fast relation drawback on the special two? Uh, well, <coughs> this is because I want to look at, um, when I look at the Galois rotation 
here, I want that the Galois, so the, the Galois optation here I is going to be a uh, uh, OF tensor OF. So I want that this is sufficiently big. But uh, as I said, I mean, you, you don't really need to assume that it contains SL2F. What you want is that this is something dimension three over the symbol plus, plus uh, a character. Um, so this you need to have some, it's just to have also some R equals T theorem that you need to have irreducibility. But uh, as I said, SL2FP is, is probably not required. 